When creating axes in D3, I would say the hard part is finding out the proper scales for both your axes. Once you have them, as we do here, creating a D3 axis object is quite simple. Since our code's getting slightly more verbose, at least compared to the dimple.js code we had earlier, I've added comments to each section of the D3 code to describe what functions performed within. I've also moved the debugger down from the top of the file to right before we create our axes. In this case, the axes function dot axis is in D3's SVG module to create an SVG axis, and we need to specify a scale using dot scale to tell D3 what the range of the axis represents. In this case, passing in time scale for our x axis. And since D3 is so flexible, we can chain other functions to our axis to customize its appearance. In this case, we want our ticks to be every two years. In this case, to specify years, we go into the D3 time module and specify years. If we wanted a finer grain, we could specify a different time object. For example, let's say days. But in our case, since the World Cup happens only every four years, specifying every tick mark every two years should be more than enough. And here we do the same thing for our y-axis, passing the scale of count scale, which represents our attendance range and domain. And since this is the y-axis, we specify that we want to orient it on the left. So we now have our D3 axis objects, but what we don't have is the axis in SVG on our page.